Welcome in folks to another Fallout 76 video and in today's video we're going to be showcasing a particular build that some of you new and veteran players might find very useful and rewarding to work towards during your journey across Appalachia and beyond. That's right folks, we're going to be showcasing my Junkie Sneak Rifle build, which in my opinion is a very optimal and useful build for you high health players. But before we get into the video, if you can remember to hit that like button so that more people in the Fallout 76 community can see this, and also if you feel you're missing out on videos, consider clicking that bell notification button so you can keep up to date whenever I post a new video. So let's get into it. The Junkies build has been a playstyle I've been using for probably 90% of the time I've been playing Fallout 76. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, Pineapple, what about the bloody bills? The meta of bills, that high risk, high reward build that I always see people using. Well, believe me folks, I like the risk, but honestly, I'm too much of a scaredy cat to be running around Appalachia with low health all the time that I'd probably poop my pants at the sight of a rad roach giving me the stink eye. So, with that being said, being a junkies build, I can keep my pantaloons nice and dry while also having an A1 time. So, if you're like me, and you're looking for a build that keeps you pumping lead into your foes, while also having a nice and full health bar, well maybe, just maybe, this is the build for you. The build itself does come with a few drawbacks, but similar to a bloody build, it comes with that high reward factor. We'll start with the special stats. Now, for you new players, you will need to invest a bit of time, and when I mean a bit of time, I mean a lot of time, into unlocking and ranking up your legendary perk cards. In order for this to work, you will need the following legendary perk cards to boost your special stats. Now, you don't have to have each legendary perk card maxed out, but it doesn't hurt to have it maxed out. You'll need max rank of legendary strength, legendary agility, legendary intelligence, and also legendary luck, as this will give each of those categories plus five to your perk points in each of those categories. So make sure to get those rank ups in first, but if you're new to the game, you can mimic the layout to this build to the best of your ability. Your special points, once you have those legendary perk cards maxed out, will need to look a little bit like this. Four points allocated to strength, 15 into perception, 5 into Endurance, 5 into Charisma, 1 into Intelligence, 13 into Agility, and also 13 into Luck. Once you have those special points allocated, you can use the following perk cards to optimize this build. In the Strength category, we have the following. Max Rank of Bandolier, so that your Ballistic Ammo weighs 90% less. 2 Ranks of Barbarian, so that each point of Strength will add plus 3 to your damage resistance. Max rank of Traveling Pharmacy so that all of your chems will weigh 90% less because, as the build states, you're a junkies build, so you're going to be carrying a lot of chems. And lastly, two ranks of Strongback to give you that extra bit of carry weight to your character. In the Perception category, we have the following. Max rank of Concentrated Fire to target limbs and to gain high accuracy and damage per shot. Max rank of Commando, Expert Commando and Master Commando to give you plus 60% extra damage with your automatic rifles. And lastly, Max rank of Tank Killer so that your rifles and pistols ignore 36% of your target's armor and have a 9% chance to stagger enemies. In the Endurance category, we have the following. Rank 1 of Rejuvenated, Max Rank of Chem Resistant, as this will give you complete immunity to chem addictions, because once you have all of those addictions you want for this build, because, let's face it, as a junkie, you're going to be taking a lot of chems and we don't want too many addictions for this to work. I will advise though to equip Chem Resistant once you've acquired all of your addictions that you will need for this build. And lastly, rank 2 of Ironclad, which will give you plus 20 damage and energy resistance while not wearing power armor. In the Charisma category, we have the following. Max rank of Tenderizer, so that you can make your target receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. Strange in numbers, so that positive mutation effects are 25% stronger if teammates are mutated too. And lastly, rank 1 of Inspirational, so that when you're on a team, you gain 5% extra XP. In the Intelligence category, we have the following. Max rank of Batteries included, so that Energy Weapon Ammo weighs 90% less. However, if you don't use Energy Weapons, you can swap this out for anything else you want to. You can even have Max rank of Demolition Expert, which will give you plus 60% extra damage with Explosives, which also applies to weapons you acquire with the Explosive effect attached. 
However, in this case, I have rank 3 of Demolition Expert, which gives me plus 40% extra damage to explosives as I currently use both ballistic and energy weapons. In the agility category, we have the following. Max rank of adrenaline, and this is a must-have card, as this will give you plus 10% with maxed out at 60% damage for 30 seconds per kill. Yes, folks, this card is a doozy, so make sure to invest in this card when you can. Rank 2 of Gun Fu so that you gain plus 10%, then plus 20% damage to your next two targets while using VATS. Rank 1 of Escape Artist so that when you sneak, you lose enemies and running no longer affects stealth. Rank 1 to sneak so that you're 25% harder to detect while sneaking. Rank 3 to Covert Operative so that your ranged sneak attacks deal 2.5% normal damage. And then I will add also that an excellent legendary perk card to combine with this, if you have the ability to unlock it, is Max Rank of Follow Through, which basically means that your ranged sneak damage increases by 40% for 10 seconds. And lastly, Max Rank of Action Boy so that your action points regenerate 45% faster. And finally, in the luck category, we have the following. Max rank of critical savvy, so that critical hits only consume 55% of your critical meter while using VATS. Max rank of starch genes, as this means you will never mutate from RADS, and RADAWAY will never cure mutations. This is a must-have perk card, because this build, like most builds, will encourage you to get a little freaky in the wasteland and acquire some mutations. What mutations do I use, Pineapple? Well, don't worry, we'll get into the mutations very shortly. I will also add, make sure to have this card unequipped while acquiring the mutations you desire. And then, once you have all the mutations needed, equip this card so that, as the card states, Radaway will never cure or remove your mutations. Max rank of Class Freak, so that the negative effects of your mutations are reduced by 75%. Max rank of 4 leaf clover, so that each hit in VATS has an excellent chance to fill your critical meter. Rank 1 of better criticals, so that VATS criticals now do plus 20% damage. And finally, max rank of bloody mess, so that you deal plus 15% extra bonus damage, and your enemies will now explode into a gory red paste. Now folks, on to the addictions, that you need to actually call yourself and this build a Juggies build. Again, you're probably asking yourself, why do I need addictions for this build to work? Aren't addictions bad for you? Well, Vault Dwellers, don't be too hasty. Addictions in Fallout 76 can actually be very beneficial, so let's get into them. Now, this is where things might get a little bit confusing, but once you have the following addictions applied to your character that I feel after three years of trial and error are the best addictions for this playstyle. You will need to acquire the five following addictions for this build. That's all you need, just five, and the addictions are as follows. An alcohol addiction, which will give you minus one to charisma and minus one to agility. A day tripper addiction, which will give you minus one to luck and minus one to charisma. A medex addiction, which will give you minus 10 damage resistance and minus one to agility. A Mentats Addiction, which will give you minus one to Charisma. And finally, a Psycho Addiction, which will give you minus one to Strength and minus ten to Damage Resistance. Now, there's probably a lot of people going, Whoa, Pineapple, hang on, that's a lot of negative effects. And well, you'd be right. But there's a few things to point out here with these particular addictions. Firstly, none of these addictions will affect your intelligence, because quite frankly, you want to level up as much as you can while also being able to output a lot of damage. The addictions also don't affect your perception, which will help you with your weapon accuracy while in VATS, and the extra benefits given to you with perception. They also don't affect your endurance, and also have a minimal impact on your agility. However, yes, there are a few negatives to your strength and damage resistance, but that's where your mutations come into play. So let's get a little freaky and let's take a look at the mutations I have. Firstly, I would advise, depending on what stage of the game you've completed, there are two ways to acquire mutations. The first way is probably the most tedious and painstaking way to acquire mutations, but when in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, you have to take what you can get. And that way is to give your character as much rads as possible until you acquire mutations. 
but it's completely random what mutations you'll acquire. So if you can hold out until you have the caps and you've gained access to the White Springs bunker, you can either purchase the mutations or purchase the plans to craft the mutations from Modus at the White Springs bunker in the Science Wing. Now you might need to server hop a few times if you only have the caps to buy the mutations, as Modus's inventory will differ depending on what server you're on. However, if you're a multi-thousand cap tycoon of the wastes and you have the caps to burn, you can purchase the plans to craft the following mutations you'll need. Now the first mutation listed here is Adrenal Reaction, which is not necessary at all for this build, as this mutation is aimed at bloody builds, as this will give you minus 12 to your hate HP, but will reward you with extra weapon damage while on low health. You're probably wondering, well, Pineapple, why do you have that mutation? Well, the simple answer is, is that I swap my character from both junkies to bloodied from time to time, as I'm currently trying to be less of a scaredy cat and actually putting on my big boy pants and testing out being a bloodied build. But don't worry, I will get into the bloodied build in another video. The main mutations you want are the following. Bird Bones, which will reduce your falling speed, give you plus 4 to your agility and minus 1 to your strength. Eagle Eyes, which will give you plus 25% extra to your critical damage, plus 4 to your perception and minus 1 to your strength. Egghead, which will give you plus 6 to your intelligence, minus 1 to strength and minus 1 to endurance. Empath, which will reduce the damage taken by the player character's teammates by 25%, but increase the damage taken by the player character by 33%. Herbivore, which means your character will only eat veggies, but this means any consumable that falls under the vegetable category will have double the benefits. For example, Cranberry Relish will give you even more benefits to bonus XP gain. Marsupial, because, I mean, let's face it, this mutation is a must, because your jump height is increased and you gain plus 20 to your carry weight, but yes, your intelligence is decreased by minus 1. Scaly Skin, so that your damage and energy resistance is increased by plus 50, however, your AP is hit by minus 12. And lastly, Speed Demon, which will increase your movement speed and reload speed, however your hunger and thirst is depleted by plus 50% while not moving. Now don't get me wrong, there are a ton of other mutations you can factor in here that could be beneficial and I encourage you to play around with this build to make it even better than what it is. But let's look at this from another angle. The mutations listed might be a lot to take in and probably very overwhelming to some. But let's see all of those negative effects disappear when I join a team. Boom! Did you see that? I'll give you a few seconds to take a look at those stat changes and even when it comes to your special stats. On a team. Off a team. That's because of the perk cards we equipped earlier on in this video. And also a final mutation that procs once you're on a team, which is Herd Mentality, which when solo or not on a team, gives you minus two to all special stats, but when grouped, gives you plus two to all of your special stats across the board while on a team. Now, Herd Mentality is completely optional if you prefer to play solo, as all of the above will still be super effective and both your addictions and mutations will work well in synergy. Now that we've covered your special stats, your perk cards, addictions and mutations, let's move on to the fun part where this build really comes into play. Your weapons and armor. When it comes to your weapons, this build focuses on automatic weapons, so you want to be aiming to automatic fixers, assault rifles, handmaids, and if you use energy weapons, the automatic laser rifle, Tesla rifle, and even the newly added, and if you are lucky enough to acquire it, the all new fan favorite Alien Disintegrator with the automatic barrel mod. You've probably noticed from time to time, if you're a new player, you might have seen some weapons drop with some crazy names and some stars listed beside it. For example, the Junkies the Fixer. Well, what is this? Well, that's where these legendary weapons come into play with this build, as any weapon with the Junkies effect attached will gain when you have all the addictions you need, will gain plus 50% extra damage capped at 5 addictions to all weapons with that effect. 
And as you can see with my explosive fixer, I gain even more damage because of the demolition expert perk card we acquired earlier on in the video. So when it comes to weapons in this build, you want to be aiming for that junkies effect. But you can also use other weapons with other effects. However, they won't be as optimal as the junkies effect. With this build, we went for a sneak rifle build. So having the likes of a fixer which improves your stealth and faster sneaking movement is an amazing weapon that works well with this build. And any weapon you can slap a suppressor on with is highly beneficial to utilize the sneaking benefit to this build. Now, on to the armor. For this build and taking into consideration the negative effects we receive from our addictions, you want to preferably be hunting for and once you also have the ability to craft legendary armor, you want to be using, if possible, a full set of Vanguard's armor. The Vanguard effect increases your damage and energy resistance by plus 35 per piece, the higher your health. So having a full set of this armor will greatly outweigh the negative effects that you're getting from the addictions that affect your damage and energy resistance. Now, when it comes to those two and three star effects on your armor, there are many different effects that will work extremely well with this build. However, some of the most recommended effects that I would suggest if you can get your hands on are the Sentinels effect, which has a 75% chance to reduce damage by 15% while standing still, and also the Powered effect, which increases action point refresh speed. There are some bonus effects like weapon rate reduction, chem reduction, and even food and weight reduction effects that can be very beneficial, but for my own build, because I carry a lot of weapons and also a lot of ammo, I would suggest trying to unlock and purchase deep pocketed plans for the armor set that you have, because when equipped, it will increase your carry capacity by plus 10 per piece when you have the deep pocketed mod attached. I would also suggest, along with obtaining a deep pocketed mod, try and search for the buttressed mod for your armor, because when you have this attached to your individual pieces of armor, it will increase your damage, energy, and even your radiation resistance. And there you have it folks, that is my in-depth walkthrough of my junkie sneak rifle build. I want to add that it might take you a bit of time obtaining and unlocking all of these items, weapons, perks, and attributes to this build. But hopefully this video will have given you some motivation and even a better understanding at how this build works. Like I said, I've been using this build for roughly 90% of the time I've been playing Fallout 76. And after some time of trial and error and practice, I feel this is probably a great build to contend with the likes of the bloody bills and other bills that we can use in this game. And have fun with this folks, and heck, even improve upon what I've created here or follow this build down to a T, it's entirely up to you. And if you liked this video and found it beneficial, consider hitting the subscribe button for more Fallout 76 build videos in the future. I also stream 5 days a week over on Twitch, so if you'd like to catch me live and want to see this build and other builds in action, or just want to come and hang out with some of the Fallout community, I'll leave a link to my Twitch in the description below. If you'd also like to connect with more people who play Fallout 76 and want to join our community, you can join my Discord server, which I'll leave in a link in the description below. I want to also say a massive thank you to all of my followers and subscribers over on Twitch and here on YouTube, because it means the world to me that you enjoy my content and the work I produce. And lastly, to you, the viewer. The person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for taking the time to be here and I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Vault Dwellers, stay safe out there in the wasteland, and I'll catch you all in the next video.